Reaction rates are proportional to the concentration of reactants. A rate law is an expression that shows how the rate depends on the concentrations of reactants. A rate law contains a rate constant, which is little k. The bigger the k value, the higher the rate. The smaller the k value, the lower the rate. k is independent of reactant concentration. In other words, if our reactants are 1 molar, or if they're 3 molar, or 0.2 molar, that doesn't affect K. But increases in temperature and the presence of catalysts will affect K. And that makes sense, because when temperature increases, rate will increase. And if you have a catalyst, the rate will increase. K changes depending on the temperature specifically. A rate law has this form. You write the word rate and then you put an equal sign and then you write a lowercase k and then you write any of the reactants and then you raise each of those reactant concentrations to a certain power. Those powers are called the reaction orders. The sum of the reaction orders is called the overall reaction order. That's the reaction order for the entire reaction. This is a very important point. All reaction orders are determined experimentally. As a general rule, you cannot look at a balanced equation and decide what the reaction order is for any given reactant. You have to do an experiment to figure it out. Usually reaction orders are 0, 1, or 2, but they could be fractions. If a reaction is zero order in a particular reactant, changing its concentration does not affect the rate, as long as there is some of the reactant present. So as long as you have some of that reactant, whether you have a whole bunch of it or just eh, some, it's not going to affect the rate at all. If a reaction is first order, in a reactant, those lead to proportional changes in the rate. In other words, if a reaction is first order, when you double that reactant's concentration, the rate will double. If you cut that reactant's concentration in half, the rate is cut in half. That's for a reactant that is first order. If a reaction is second order in some reactant, then you have squared changes, which means when you triple that reactant's concentration, the rate will increase by tripled squared, which is 9. If you cut that reactant's concentration in half, then the rate will be affected by one-half squared, so it will drop to one-fourth of what it was. And we could continue. We'll do third order as well. If first order is pretty much linear changes, proportional changes, second order is squared changes, it only makes sense that third order would be cubed changes, which means if you double a reactant's concentration, the rate would increase by double cubed which is a factor of 8. If you triple a reactant's concentration and the reaction is third order in that reactant, then the rate will go up by triple cubed, which is 27. Here's a picture on the right of magnesium and hydrochloric acid. Let's pretend that this reaction is first order with regard to concentration of hydrochloric acid. If we double the acid concentration, the reaction rate would double. Let's give you an example of how this is done. At the top we have a balanced equation. We're asked to find the reaction order of each reactant, the overall reaction order, and the units of the rate constant. And so what we've done are three different experiments where we wrote down the initial concentrations of both reactants and we wrote down the initial rate of formation of HCl. What we're going to do here is 
figure out the reaction order for hydrogen, we want to take two of the experiments that have hydrogen amounts being different, but the other reactant being the same. So in other words, if there's any difference in the rate between reactions B and C, it must be because we changed the hydrogen concentration. Here's what we do. We say, okay, in going from B to C, the hydrogen concentration doubled, and what did that do to the rate? We look on the right, and it increased, you can see, by a factor of about four. If we double something, doubled to the what gives you a factor of four, so the reaction order of hydrogen is two. Let's look at experimental setups A and B to figure out the reaction order for chlorine. To figure out the reaction order for chlorine, we want two experiments where the chlorine differs. The other reactant, in this case hydrogen, has to stay the same. We simply look at the data and we say chlorine concentration doubled and the rate doubled. That's a proportional change, which means that the reaction order of chlorine will be one. The overall reaction order is going to be the sum of those, which is three, which means our rate law will look like this. We write the word rate, we write an equal sign, we write a lowercase k, then we write the concentration of H2 raised to, I'm circling it right here in the middle of the screen, raised to the second power multiplied by the chlorine concentration raised to, and again I'm circling it, the first power. Rate is molarity per second. There's our equal sign. Concentration of hydrogen squared would be molarity squared. Concentration of chlorine would be molarity. What would have to be the units for the rate constant in order that the units on the left, namely molarity per second, equals all of this stuff put together on the right? And with a little bit of thought, you will realize that the unit on the rate constant must be molarity squared and seconds both in the denominator. Or another way to write that is molarity to the minus two seconds to the minus one. Check it out for yourself. If you put that unit right there in here where the question mark is, you will get molarity per second on each side. Let's summarize. A rate law has the form rate is equal to K times one reactant concentration to some power, the other reactant concentration to some power for however many reactants you have. Where K is the rate constant, R's are reactants, and M and N are reaction orders. The overall reaction order is the sum of the reaction orders. Reaction orders are determined by analyzing experimental data. If the rate changes proportionately, i.e. linearly, with reactant concentrations, the reaction order is one for that reactant. If changes in reactant concentrations lead to squared changes in rate, the reaction order is two for that reactant, etc.